Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of here today. Welcome to another episode of Doctor Who. As we're into the final stretch here, uh, we're on episode 11 of season 5. Only three episodes to go. I have ploughed through this. <laughs> um, God, uh, to provide context, I started recording this season on a Thursday. Today is Sunday, so three days later. And I'm planning to finish it tomorrow. So, what's that? The whole season in five days? I'll take that. I'll take that, honestly. <laughs> and to give context how far ahead I am right now, I'm going to, after recording this, I'm just going to, re I'm releasing Stolen Earth. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'm quite far ahead as well. I feel that. We had the Vincent and the Doctor last time. Beautiful episode, stunning episode. Check it out if you haven't already. I've got further ado. Let's just jump right into, uh, to see what's going on here in Season 5, Episode 11 of Doctor Who, The Lodger. No, Amy, it's definitely not the fifth moon of Cinder Callista. I think I can see a Ryman's. <laughs> Amy! Amy! <laughs> God, this day just gets from bad to worse. First of all, he sees a Ryland. <laughs> Sorry, Ryland. <laughs> not to be confused with Ryland, who hosted Supermarket Sweep Love Ryland. Um, and he gets blown out the TARDIS and it disappears with Amy inside. Uh oh. <laughs> Bad to worse. From outside of Ryland to Colchester. I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta stop, take, stop taking shots. Like I took a shot of Hull, and I'm taking shots at Hull, Don, uh, Colchester. I'll take shots in Doncaster all day. But Colchester, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need your help. There's been an accident. Please. Kid. <laughs> Lovely of you. Community spirit, you know. Kid, this old man asking for help from inside his house. He's doing it through the PA system, so you're thinking, well, he must be in trouble. Maybe he's fallen over and he can't get up or whatever. Bad idea, though. <laughs> Will you help me? What's wrong? Something terrible's happened. Please help me. This kid is braver or stupider than me. <laughs> I don't know, pretend there a long time ago. You go in, the light's flickering, man is shadowed, standing at the top of the stairs, Come and help me. Please, come and help me. Nope. <laughs> I've seen horror movies. Nope. Craig, what's that on the ceiling? What's what on the ceiling? That. It's coming from upstairs. Who lives up there again? Just some bloke. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> so this is 79A. That guy lived on 79B, the old man. 72? That guy lived on B. They live on A. There's a shadow growing from their ceiling, his floor. Not good. James Corden, how you doing? <laughs> and this is a different time, remember. This isn't 2023, oversaturated, everyone's sick of him, James Corden. This is 2010. Yeah, this is 2010. Gavin and Stacey's popped off, I'm pretty sure at this point. Uber popular James Corden. This is a different time in British culture. <laughs> You put the adverb yet? Did it today. Furniture room available. Four hundred pound PCM. Suit you unprofessional. Sounds ideal. Your mission in life: find me a man. Otherwise, you have to settle for me. You have to settle for me first. Right, can you two shack. <laughs> I see where this is going. You know, you're both kind of beating around the point. If you two could just shag each other already, and we'd call it a day. <laughs> Who's going to move into this room? I can only assume the doctor. He is suited and booted. I give you that. He doesn't have money, as far as I'm aware, but. Yeah, in a pinch. <laughs> in a pinch. Yeah, but I've kind of got plans. No, it's nothing important. It's just great. Oh, thanks, Soph. Sorry, I really should go. Do you mind? No. I could stay. No. I mean, Go on. I've got plans. Just pizza. Yeah, it's just pizza. All right, confess your feelings once again, okay? You don't have to jump right to chat again, but confess your feelings at least, because <laughs> I can see where this is going. I can, I can smell it a mile off. It's not just pizza. <laughs> That's what I would have done. <laughs> Not what that kid did going upstairs. I'd have been down there at the bottom. I'd have seen something going on up there. You know, guy in the shadows. Weird noise. And then him looking through the glass of there and walking away. And I just left. <laughs> just, just, uh, I love you. I love you. I don't know if you knew. Oh. Every time. I love you. I love you. Well, ask her because I'm your new lodger. <laughs> I knew it was going to be her. <laughs> and his new lodger is the doctor. I guess, you know, whilst he's waiting to figure out where the hell Amy and his TARDIS has gone, needs somewhere to stay. 
with James Corden, why not? <laughs> why not? Pizza, beer, bit of TV, James Corden and the Doctor, the boys. But I only put the advert up today, I didn't put my address. Well, aren't you lucky I came along? Less of a young professional, ancient amateur. I don't know if I want you to have some rent. That's probably quite a lot. I can never tell. <laughs> Random guy shows up, says, I'm moving in. How'd you get my address? Aren't you lucky I'm here? I'm not a, you know, I'm not the professional you were looking for, but I do have a big bag of money that looks like I robbed a bank after having, you know, getting my meal deal off Tesco's. Here you go. I'm coming in. <laughs> I just have a bit of doctor knows something's up with this house. But, um, hey, roomies. <laughs> That's how we greet each other nowadays, isn't it? They call me the doctor. I don't know why. I call me the doctor too. Still don't know why. Who lives upstairs? Just some bloke. Very quiet. Usually. <laughs> Fair response. Guy shows up. Paper bag full of money. Says, I'm moving in. I'm your new lodger. My name's the doctor. That's all. Who's your upstairs neighbour? Bit weird stuff going on in there. I'll just let myself in, okay? <laughs> it's a lot. I suppose that dry rot or damp or mildew or none of the above. I'll get someone to fix it. No, I'll fix it. Good at fixing rot. Call me the rotmeister. No, I'm the doctor. Don't call me the rotmeister. Okay, I'm sure we'll all agree at this moment he's the rotmeister now, right? <laughs> this is the rotmeister who show from now on. Okay, welcome to some rotmeister who reactions, everybody. <laughs> Mark's old room, he owns the place. Uncle he'd never even heard of died. There's a load of money in the will. How very convenient. No time to lose. <laughs> I appreciate James Corden's character here because he's just very confused and I feel represented because I would be absolutely mystified, okay? Suddenly there's like a static noise from upstairs and this random guy showed up and said I'm moving in, licks his finger and holds it out for me and I'm like, does he want, want me to look at? <laughs> he's just very confused. I want to see my credentials. National insurance number, NHS number, references. Is that a reference from the Archbishop of Canterbury? I'm his special favourite. Are you implying you want to play? <laughs> you know what, let's not get into that, Doctor. Let's not get into it implying what you were doing, what happened to you as the special favourite of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Let's not get into that, mate. <laughs> So, who's the girl on the bridge? My friend, Sophie. Girlfriend? Friend who's a girl. Why am I telling you this? One of those faces. Where's your stuff? It'll materialise. Why won't you man? I can't decide where to go. <laughs> so I just keeps bouncing around, you know, phasing into a place and then phasing out. Doesn't know where to park, doesn't know where to land. Amy doesn't know how to drive this thing. In doctor, you really should have showed up by now. <laughs> Where did you learn to cook? Paris. 18th century. No, hang on, that's not recent. 20th. Sorry, I'm not used to doing it in the right order. Has anyone ever told you that you're a bit weird? They never really stop. I'm not much of a traveller. I can tell from your sofa. I'm starting to look like it. <laughs> All right, Doctor. <laughs> Jesus. Let Craig get comfortable, for God's sake. God, maybe he's sagging into the sofa a little bit from how much he sits on it, but you don't have to shoot at him like that, Doc James. I like it here. I'd miss it. I'd miss... Those keys. Fondling them. I'm holding them. Right. Anyway, these are your keys. I can stay. Yeah, you're weird and you can cook. It's good enough for me. That's all he needed, okay? You paid rent up front. You're a bit weird. He's a bit weird. You can cook. James Corden. Uh, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it. James Corden in the... Late 2000s, early 2010s, typecast as a guy who really likes to eat. There you go. That's the nicest way I can put it. Match made in heaven. You ever need me out of your hair? Just give me a shout. Why would I want that? Girlfriend or boyfriend? I'll shout. Something like, I was not expecting this! <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bit unexpected if suddenly a girlfriend or boyfriend loved that. They just looked him up and down boyfriend <laughs> like you're wearing a bow tie you could be <laughs> if a boyfriend or girlfriend randomly showed up the doctor would very much be like well, i wasn't expecting this <laughs> we shouldn't touch it no, that's a bond doctor <laughs> sorry could you not rip my new earpiece he seems a laugh a bit weird good weird you know and he just happens to have three grand on him in a paper bag doctor god i wonder what his earpiece was he was the earpiece to talk to the tardis good figure out where amy is <laughs> currently absolutely everywhere and nowhere um and James, I know your name's Craig, Colin. I'm going to call you James anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up with random stranger, weird, shows up with three grand in cash in a paper bag. This place is £400 per calendar month in rent. So he just paid seven and a half rent months rent up front. No wonder he let you move in. <laughs> wait, wait, the doctor. Craig, what if he's a dealer? 
honestly one of the most sensible suggestions I've heard after hearing his name is a doctor. You know, like he gives you your special medicine, he gives you your pills. That's actually a really solid drug dealer name. I'd say I'll write it down, but I don't ever plan on becoming a drug dealer personally. But you know, if you do, take it. I need your help. How's the TARDIS coping? See for yourself. She's locked in a materialisation loop trying to land a car. What well, if it's stopping her is upstairs in that flat? Upstairs and sort it. My little girl's hurt. Oh no. So, okay. The Katardis can't park because of whatever's up in that flat. So we need to sort what's in that flat. And what's in that flat currently is drawing another person upstairs to that flat. Oh no. <laughs> Anything that can stop the TARDIS from landing is big. Will you help me? Help you? A bow tie? Are you serious? Hang on. Stable. I can't go up there until I know what it is. Right, tall man. I doesn't realise who and what I am. <laughs> James having a little eavesdrop. I mean, most of that wasn't in code. Yeah, he just very directly said, the man upstairs can't know who I am. And I can't use advanced technology. You know, <laughs> very direct. To anyone else hearing this conversation, we're talking absolute gibberish. Practical eruption in chicken, big ox, Lombardi spiral. All I've got to do is pass as an ordinary human being. You're doing a great job of it, holding your gel. Wait, wait, I actually have gel right here. <laughs> holding your gel and it's never, you know, doing it properly, just, yeah, get the ends. That's all you need. <laughs> 10 out of 10 humaning jock. Hey, you convinced James Corden you were just talking gibberish, so there you go. Oh, Ty, get rid! Oh, Ty's oh, cool. Tell me what normal blokes do. Watch telly, play football, go down the pub. I could do those things. Localised time loop. Whatever's happening upstairs is affecting you. Mm. So, so something going on upstairs, he lured that girl up, causing a localised time loop, which is really messing with the TARDIS. <laughs> just running amok. Might want to investigate, Doc. You might want to investigate at some point. Must not use the sonic. Doctor, how long are you going to be in there? What the hell is that? What did you say? I'm just going to go upstairs, see if he's okay. Right. Doctor? <laughs> Doctor, have the distracted having a really good long shower in there. And James Corden's just going to have a look at upstairs, which, not good, James. Don't do that. What did you say? Great. Oh, oh. I heard a big bang. Thank you, Craig. I don't need your help. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Craig checking on the old man upstairs. He heard a big bang. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I know a big bang's coming. The you know, Big bang, Pandora opens, silence reigns. Don't know. Well, if this old man's doing stuff that could, you know, is disrupting the TARDIS like it is. I guess a big bang could be very bad. Doctor Foot has a fool in the shower. <laughs> Reaching for the... Sonic screwdriver, which he keeps with the toothbrushes, as you do. I assume he's going to grab a regular toothbrush and wield it like a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> and then brush his teeth with his sc sonic screwdriver. Do not press the button. I know you think it's a vibrating toothbrush. That's a screwdriver. That will mess up your teeth, mate. What happened? What's going on? <laughs> Is that my toothbrush? You spoke to the man upstairs. What do you look like? More normal than you do. We might be in trouble. Thanks. Oh, well, if I ever am, you can come and save me with my toothbrush. <laughs> Shirtless. <laughs> covering his nipples. <laughs> Appreciate it. 10 out of 10, no notes. Oh, hello. Ah, hello, the doctor. You must be Sophie. Oh, oh. We've got a match today. We're one down if you fancy it. Football, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I, f I think I'm about to see one of the funniest things possible in the doctor trying to play football. <laughs> I can't imagine him playing football, but I'm about to see it. And I don't think I want to see it. Do you play Sophie? Just stands on the sidelines. My mascot. I'm your mascot. Well, yeah, not my mascot. It's a football match. I can't take a date. Didn't say I was your date. Neither did I. Better get dressed. You do better get dressed. Doctor could feel how awkward that was. <laughs> Ask her out, bad. She'll say yes. She'll say yes. Also, not a single person commented there on the doctor just drinking straight out of the carton. Like, guys, tell him to get a cup. <laughs> What do you think? I didn't say he was gorgeous. You unlocked the door. How did you do that? Those are your keys. You must have left them last time you came. I've got another set. Two sets of keys to someone else's house. Yeah. You must like it here too. <laughs> yeah, doctor can see it. Come on. <laughs> oh, you have two sets of keys to his house, for God's sake. You have your own personal care and you have his spare pair. Like, just move in. When the doctor leaves, I think you should just come in. You know, and you can even round the room again if you want to share one. <laughs> Football. Okay, well done. That is normal. Football's the one with the sticks, isn't it? What's your proper name? Just call me the doctor. You can't go up to these guys and go, hey, this is my new flatmate. He's called the doctor. Why not? Because it's weird. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> it's very weird, doctor. Also, you showing up in a tweed blazer to the football match is kind of weird. Oh, is oh, what, which football? Is that the one with sticks? Is he talking about cricket? Because I know 
Was it the fifth doctor? Loved a bit of cricket. <laughs> Where are you strongest? Arms. What position? Not sure. You any good though? Let's find out. What? Okay, maybe the doctor's a bit good at football. <laughs> He's brilliant at everything at the end of the day, isn't he? God. He's spinning all over the shop. Damn. I give it to him. Matt Smith does have the look of a man who was on the Cambridge football team. You know what? The captain of the Cambridge football team. <laughs> Craig, you know, it's James Corden over there, not having a fun time, you know? He wants to be the star of the show. He wants to show off for Sophie. Not have a, you know, cheering for the doctor over there. <laughs> now, Craig, I know you're upset. But that's a brilliant set piece strategy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see a wall, so if that was a penalty, that's illegal. But that's a free if that's a free kick, then a secret runner take running in like that. Give it to him. I love this game! <laughs> that's so stereotypical. <laughs> All the planets and lives and species he saved. But what gets the crowd chanting the doctor's name? Football, baby. <laughs> Greatest game on earth. Please, can you help me? Can you help me? Hello? I've lost my mum and I don't know where she is. Help you? I don't like that. I preferred the old man. The little girl, a lot creepier. <laughs> he's taking voices. Unless he's working with a little girl as well. There could be a family. We've seen families before, but also likely I was just taking voices and faces. Next week we've got the crown and anchor. We're gonna annihilate. Them. Annihilate? No, no violent me. Not while I'm around. <laughs> not today. Not ever. I'm the doctor. The oncoming storm. And you basically meant beat them in a football match, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> doctor. Oh, <laughs> I love him. So serious. <laughs> he went into a deep speech there. No violence. I'm the oncoming storm. For God's sake. You meant football. Yeah. <laughs> Stop! Hey! Stop! 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 I thought there was something broken with my stream for a second. <laughs> but nope. Time loop. Yep. The little girl calling that woman up. And then the, you know, what's it called? Syn not synchronized. Regionalized time loop. Again, unlucky Smithy, James Corden getting stuck in a time loop of beer spraying all over him. Amy, it's happening again. What does the scanner say? A lot of nines. Is it good? Are there nines? Tell me, it's good. Yes, yes, it's, it's good. Uh, zigzag plot, Amy. Amy, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's actually good that they're all nines. <laughs> I think he was telling you it's good they're all nines because you asked him to tell you it was good it was all nines, but I don't think it's good they're all nines, girl. <laughs> Hello. Hey, man. Sophie's coming round. I was wondering if you could give us some space. Oh, don't mind me. You won't even know me. That's the idea. <laughs> you and Sophie can have your own time if you ask her out, for God's sake, man. Um, no, no question about him holding the orange traffic cone. No. I mean, he's a weird guy, I suppose. <laughs> you won't even know he's here. That—that that is the plan. That no one knows he's here. Why do pizza booze telly? No interruptions. <laughs> Soph, I think. Where's this going? I think that we should... Mm. Hello. <gasps> God's sake, Doctor. <laughs> I thought he was going to check it out, you know. I think we should uh, get a kebab instead of pizza tonight, you know. <laughs> but no Doctor interrupts, for God's sake. And he's wearing a lot of wiring. Because <laughs> um. life can seem pointless. What do you really want to do? I only ever told Craig. I want to work cooking after animals. Maybe abroad. What's stopping you? She can't. You need qualifications. Scary. Everyone I know lives around it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Craig, I can, I can see that, you know. <laughs> you don't want her to leave. Because you want to be close to her. Even if you're scared of asking her out, you know. The doctor's not going to help you with that. <laughs> this doctor's all for pushing people to follow their dreams, you know. Live their lives as they wish. Perhaps you'll just have to stay here. A little bit miserable till the day you drop. The call centre is about where you should be. That's horrible. Is it true? Of course it's not true. I'm not staying in a call centre all my life. Uh, I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, Sophie. Reverse psychology, you know. Get to your innermost secret, okay. Doctor, very good at it. He's a brilliant man, I tell him. All this while sorting out a plug. 
God, did you see what he just did? Sorry, what's happening? Are you going to live with monkeys now? Big old world, Sophie. Work out what's really keeping you here, eh? I don't know. Don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Doctor pushing her to follow her dream or for these two crazy kids to accept, admit and accept their feelings for each other, for God's sake. What's keeping you here? M. M. This big hunk of man right here. Come on, Soph. So, you're going to be taking off then, seeing the world? What, do you think I should? Yeah. Like the doctor says, you know, what's, what's keeping you here? <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> Why is that painting one of the scariest things I've ever seen on this show? <laughs> just it's suddenly coming into frame. It just took me aback. <laughs> it looks like yellow guy from Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Grow up, got married, had a kid, got divorced and had a midlife crisis. <laughs> Chilled up. Let's go. What are you getting? Upstairs. No traces of high technology. Totally normal. No, 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 no. It can't be. The traces of energy upstairs might be normal at the minute, but that's not normal. What the hell? <laughs> part trolley, part walking frame, part washing frame, part lamp, part bicycle, part umbrella, part traffic cone, part fairy lights. You're an insane but brilliant man, Doctor. I give it to you. <laughs> Shouldn't have touched it. He is the Rottmeister after all. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Static. It gave him a shock. I don't like it. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. Breakfast. It's no more. Craig. I told you. It's enough for me to look pretty obviously poisonous substance. Oh, I know what would be really clever. Take my hand on it. <laughs> Them's a healthy football as well. <laughs> He plays football, but no offence to James Corden <laughs> and to the characters he played at the time. I don't think you could describe those as healthy lungs in particular. <laughs> it's pretty much every night, his night plan is take away beer and TV. Like, that is not sustainable for a healthy set of sportsmen's lungs. <laughs> really shouldn't have touched it though, Craig. Should have listened to the docky. Reverse the enzyme decay. Excite the tannin molecules. Go to work. You need rest. Planning meeting is important. You're important. You're going to be fine. Honestly. <laughs> Next time I'm sick, this is my ideal scenario. Just laid up in bed. Matt Smith cradling my face, telling me I'm going to be okay. Pouring drink directly into my mouth for me so I don't have to hold it. That sounds heavenly. What? I don't know what happened. That's not what my screen is telling me, Mr. Lang. What are you doing here? I suggest you take your custom elsewhere. <laughs> no, no, no. How are you feeling? I was curious. Never worked in an office. <laughs> Craig must be so suspicious of this guy. He must think he's trying to, like, steal his life. He shows up out of nowhere, no belongings, acting strange, bag of cash, and then suddenly, you know, he's taking his place on the pub team. He's impressing, you know, Sophie and spending time with her, getting in the way of his time with her. Then, suddenly, mysteriously, Craig gets knocked out. Okay, and this guy's standing over him, pouring something in his mouth, rushes to work, and he's there doing his job for him. He must think <laughs> that the doctor here is trying to steal his life, for God's sake. Brilliant in the planning meeting. Here you go, and I found some custard cream. It's my hero. Hi, Craig. Applied for a wildlife charity. Should I do it? Yeah, great, yeah, good. Go. Who next? Oh, yes. Oh, Sophie. Craig, that's your goddamn chance. She, she, she wants to take it, but she wants to be with you. That's where your chance you say, Sophie, I know she's your dream, but I've got to tell you something. I have feelings for you. I've had feelings for you for blah, 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 blah. Please, I, don't go. Or, you know, let me go with you. You know, we can do it together. That was your chance, Craig, but he was too distracted. He just sounded disinterested. Like, yeah, I don't care. Go do whatever. I don't care. Damn it, Craig. Can you hold? I have to eat a biscuit. That's not going to help his suspicions, <laughs> considering the thing that, you know, made him not feel well in the first place was getting shocked, and then he goes into the room and you have this giant electrical contraption put up. <laughs> he definitely thinks this is all you. Have you been upstairs? What's behind that door? Never seen anyone go up there. Lots of people. What kind of people? People who never came back down. Very bad. Oh, hello. <laughs> and then you see him talking to the cat about people who go upstairs and don't come back down. <laughs> He thinks you're insane trying to steal his life or both. Probably both. 
I want you to go. You can have this back and all. What have I done? Talking to a cat. Lots of people talk to cats. Sophie's all, oh, monkeys. There's that. It's our statement on modern society. <laughs> that is, you know what? On your feet, that's the best excuse for it you could have. Modern art. Because who gets modern art? I don't. <laughs> Not going to fly, no, Doc. <laughs> this would be an incredible horror movie. It's like a psychological thriller, it would be. You know, this character not even giving his name, just saying, call me the doctor. Coming in, slowly messing with your life like this. Mwah. And then it's revealed that he's not actually a bad guy. He's actually stopping the person upstairs who's the bad guy. Oh, I'd see it. When you've been here three days, it'd be the three weirdest days of my life. Only way I'm going to show you something, but shh, general background. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> only way to convince Craig to let you stay, let him know who you are fully, and the only way to do that, to tell he believes you, is to physically headbutt the information into him. This is the general background. Now, Craig, you're not going to want like this one. This is a bit more intense, okay? Headbutt's not going to do it, okay? <laughs> really get the info deep in there. You've got a target! Shh, 11, specific detail. <laughs> With this right above it, which is odd. Because Amy hasn't written it yet. Oh, that is odd. Okay. <laughs> That's how we knew. So, sometime in the future, Amy puts this, puts the ad in the window before he can, you know, he, he puts it out in the morning and Amy puts it in the specific window where she knows the doctor will be and puts that above it so he'll know what to do and where to go. So, this place, very important to stop whatever's going on, maybe also for the grander Big Bang scheme of things. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe James Corden has an important part to play. <laughs> Please, can you help me? Hi. Will you help me? What's the matter, my love? Help you. Guys, not good. <laughs> okay, now James Corden's going to insist on coming along and heading straight up there right now, Doctor. No more scanning and waiting. Because they got Sophie. And he'll be damned if he lets anything happen to Sophie. Save the girl, kiss the girl, tell her how you feel. Bada bing, bada boom. Happy endings. Off camera, probably the last part. You're never doing that ever again. Amy. That's Amy Pond. Can understand us now. Hurrah. Psychic help from the cat. The cat. I know. He's got a time engine to try and launch it. Whenever he does, they get burnt up. Okay. That explains it. Thank you for the cat. Go cats. Love cats. Me. Have a cat. Beautiful cat. We stand. Do you have cats? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have any pets? Especially cats. On a tangent there. Okay. He's got a time engine. He's trying to launch using, I mean, bodies, humans, and they're getting burnt up, evidently. But, you know, if he finds the right one, I suppose. Um, and I have a... Hopefully, we should get this time engine started before it causes, say, a big bang. People are dying up there! People are dying! People are dying! <laughs> They're being killed! Someone's up there. Oh. Someone's up there. We're rushing up. And it's Sophie, so we're really rushing up because he got stuck on a time loop. But he snapped out of it because he knows what's going on. Now it's all happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Craig, someone's dying up there. Sophie. Sophie, that's dying up there. You can't be upstairs. I've got the plan. It's a one-story building. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a one-story building. So the second floor of this place is an anomaly. Is alien, I would say, you know. It did, the second floor of this house is a spaceship with a tire engine. <laughs> tire machine engine. None of that good. None of that good. But they know Sophie's upstairs, so it's not going to stop them. What? Of course. The time engine isn't in the flat. The time engine is the flat. Build a TARDIS. Always been an upstairs. How's that think about it? Well, I don't. Perception filter. Yeah, it's just a spaceship. Someone's attempting to build a TARDIS. The only person I could think of off the top of my head who would try to build a TARDIS is the master. He loved when he had the TARDIS. He went back in time. He left the doctor. He had a grand old type of things. That door is phasing out. So I guess we're not leaving. We have to save Sophie first and, and figure out what's going on. Oh, God. That's not going to happen! Where's the letter go? You will help me. The ship has crashed. Pilot is required. Emergency crash program. Okay, that makes sense why it's different forms. It's just a computer program designed to get people out here to try and you know, get the engine going again. <laughs> Seeing if they match up to be the pilot. Doctor could pilot this thing, but I don't think you're going to be able to trick him into coming up. Well, he's already come up, so you don't have to trick him, I guess. The correct pilot has now been found. A bit worried that you were going to say that. He means you, doesn't he? The correct pilot. Calling me and I'm the new pilot. I'm way too much for this shit. My hand touches that. My planet doesn't blow up. Solar system does. 
Oh, so bad then, huh? A very, very, very big bang. <laughs> I thought he was, they, well, I thought they'd think he's the pilot. He's too much of a pilot. He's too much of a man for this ship. He wouldn't be able to hold him, okay? He, he's not, he's not wide enough for him. He, he would go in, it would just explode. I mean, a solar system wide explosion at that. I couldn't help it. Didn't want Sophie before today, but what's changed? It wants people who want to escape, but you don't want to leave. Mr. Superman, concentrate on why you want to stay. Will it work? Yes, is that a lie? Of course it's a lie. <laughs> of course it's a lie. I have no idea if it'll work, but we can give it a go. <laughs> Craig, you're the laziest man on earth. You could shut this down with how lazy you are. Feels like an insult, but it's also a plea for help here. Craig, you just have to focus on why you want to stay, and then say it out loud. Say you want to stay for Sophie because you love Sophie, and let's just get this done for Christ's sake. Geronimo! <laughs> why don't you want to leave? Oh, Sophie! I can't leave Sophie, I love Sophie! I love you too, idiot! Oh, Beautiful. <laughs> Finally. He hit the Geronimo before he did it, obviously. Having seen inside the Doctor's mind, knowing the Doctor likes to say Geronimo as well. <laughs> Taking that from him. Finally admitting his feelings, and also knowing that so, that Craig reciprocates her feelings and telling him that she loves her, he does, telling him that she loves him too, then her touching as well because she doesn't want to leave now either. And the power of both of them and how much they want to stay just to be with each other, enough to shut the ship down and save the TARDIS. Oh, true love wins. True love prevails, baby. Do you mean that? Of course I mean it. Do you mean it? I've always meant it. Ugh. And it's about to burn for God's sake. Kiss the girl. Ugh. Hey, the ship's shutting down. The TARDIS is chilling out. And Craig and Safety Sophie both pulled. Bada bing, bada boom. He kissed the girl. Mm -mm -mm. Emergency shutdown. It's imploding. Everybody out. Big emergency shutdown. Just a one house. Wow. <laughs> it looks so much just smaller now. Well, of course it does. It doesn't have a second floor. It's so much different. It does beg the question <laughs> of your house, Craig. Because just the design of it now. You know, you go in the front door and then you have a hallway to enter the house itself. So you can expand. You can take out that you know door and wall, expand out there, a bit more space. Lovely jubbly. So we spoiled our friendship though. Totally ruined it. And what about the monkeys? We could save them together, you know. Do whatever we want. You see the point of Paris if you were there with me. First, let's destroy our friendship completely. All right, not the time, lads. <laughs> let's shag first. Let's get together. Let's do it. And then, hey, Paris. I just got to say, that's a beautiful thing from him there. <laughs> you know, you couldn't see the point in traveling or going to Paris, but yeah, with her by his side, you can see the point in everything. Oh. <laughs> Oi! You're trying to sneak up? You were sort of busy. I want you to keep these. Because I might pop back soon. No, you won't. I've been in your head, remember? Still want you to keep them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he knows he never plans on coming back. That's the doctor. But I'm glad you're keeping it, Doc. Because I have a feeling we might be back here at some point. I don't know. I'd, I'd call it Chekhov's gun, but I'll call it Chekhov's, Chekhov's house keys. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Doctor. Sophie. The Doctor rocks on the fridge, also the sad, you know, broken apart now, no longer directly spelling sad, because he's not sad anymore. Picture of Doctor on the fridge, he won't be forgotten. And a damn crack in the wall. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, they're everywhere. Now we've got a two-part finale next up, so we're going to get some damn answers, I think. Go to the paper shop, leave that note for me. Right, little matchmaker, aren't you? Can't you find me a fella? Rectifier's playing up again. Oh, no, that can't be good. <laughs> she found the engagement ring that Rory had given to her. And by the look of her face, remembers a little. And by the look of that crack in, <laughs> that crack in the wall, her remembering something it had, you know, erased, not good. <laughs> I think we might rapidly be approaching the Big Bang next up. Oh, I really enjoyed that. That was really good. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. It was just, it was nice to have something different. You know, it's like a, even with a spaceship, a largely slice of life, life episode of the Doctor. You know, no grand ways to venture to an alien planet with alien species. It's a spaceship still, but overall, he plays some football, has some beers, you know, goes to work, hangs out with James Corden. 
I loved that. <laughs> that was fun. It was a nice little break that felt very needed after an emotional time with Vincent and the Doctor. And the finale next up. Next time we got the Big Bang and then the Pandorica opens in the finale. Two big episodes you're not going to want to miss. So, as always, leave a like if you enjoyed. I hope you have. Thoughts in the comments down below. Love hearing what you think and thank you for your support as ever. For all the fun facts and, you know, lore and knowledge all that you bring. It's amazing and appreciated. And I just love hearing what you think in general of the episode and everything. And... Yeah, subscribe for more so you do not miss the two-part finale. You're not going to miss that. And then we got season six and seven as Matt Smith's Doctor continues. Unless he gets really <laughs> in the finale. I imagine not, but still. <laughs> and still, till then, next time, that is, I just want to say a very special thank you for watching.